All right? Amen. Amen. We are coming out of the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. And I want to start reading in verse 16. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 12, beginning in verse 16. Praise God. It reads, And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee, then who shall all those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich for God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this is a very familiar story about the barn builder. We all know he was a rich man. He had many possessions. He had an abundance of fruit. He had many barns. Praise God. But because he had continued to prosper in his business, he decided to tear down the current barns that he had and build greater and bigger barns. Praise God. And then he said to himself, so Thou hast laid up for many years. Take thy ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But then God himself steps in. And he says to this barn builder, who was a very rich man, he said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall all those things be which thou hast provided? Now, people really need to take heed to that, and we live in a day now where people don't take heed to nothing because they don't believe. They don't take heed to anything. There are people who even drive on the street that don't take heed to the signs that are there for your protection. Praise God. So we do live in a day and hour where people don't take heed to anything because they seem to think that they are invincible. Praise God. Now, this is not what I want to talk about, but I have to kind of bring this little piece out because uh, this particular lesson, amen, shows us a great truth concerning this barn builder who had so much, amen, abundance that he forgot about the main thing, and that was the salvation of his soul. Praise God. And I don't care what you have in this life. I don't care how much of it you have. The Bible says, who shall those things be? Praise God. Amen. Amen. Because whatever you have, when you die, somebody else is going to get it. Somebody else is going to get it. Somebody else who didn't love you, didn't care about you, didn't know your name. Somebody else is going to get it. You get what I'm telling you? Hallelujah. But here's the key point that I want to address here. He says in verse 21, he says, So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich toward God. Now, when you ask the average person, are they blessed? Most would say they are. Now, everyone that is in the land of the living, you are blessed in the stand that God has shown mercy and allowed you to open up your eyes and let you partake of that particular day. Praise God. You're blessed in that stand, but that does not determine that you are blessed. Amen. 
came back. And most people today, you can walk past them and ask them how they doing. Many will shout and say, I'm blessed and highly favored. But if you were to ask people, what does blessed mean? Do you know they can't even tell you? Amen. Isn't that a shame? Amen. That people will say, I'm blessed and can't even tell you what does the word blessed mean? Now watch this. 
this. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, this thing that is true concerning God wants us to be rich. Praise God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse, let me start in verse 9 and then I'm going to read to verse 10. He says, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor. Now Jesus was rich in glory. Hello. When he took on a man flesh and he came to the earth where he dwelt among us. The Bible says he became poor. Remember when Jesus told one of his disciples that said he would follow him? He said, foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. That don't sound like somebody who was rich in material possessions while they were on the face of the earth. Come on. Amen. The Bible said there were some holy women that ministered unto Jesus of, of their substances. Come on. They blessed them with clothing. Amen. And, and other things, praise God, that were meet for food unto the body. Hallelujah. And this is what the Bible says that when Jesus was in glory, he was rich. Come on, somebody. Then when he came to earth, robed in the flesh, he became poor. That through his poverty, we might be rich. And he's talking about we becoming rich toward God. Hello. Hallelujah. And we need to become rich toward God. How many know we need relationship? See, it starts in relationship. How many know we need the wisdom of God? We need the knowledge of God. We need his understanding. We need his love and his joy and his peace and his gentleness and his goodness. Come on, somebody. We need everything that he is. And that's just the truth. Yeah. Glory to God. That is just the truth. Now, we see here that God desires that we become rich. But that's speaking of becoming rich towards God. Yes. We see that the rich man who had many barns that he had built because he had a great abundance. The scripture says that right when he was about to die,
You understand? Hallelujah. Everyone who does not make it into the kingdom of God, they are cursed and there is a place for cursed people. Praise God. In Matthew chapter 25, on the day of judgment, Jesus said some frightening words to some people that were not saved. This is what he said. Beginning in verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Yeah. 
but then they're miserable. They sad, they upset about something, they don't never pray about it, they don't never lift up their hands and say, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but you know, I put it in your hand, and you just keep praising God, because you can't afford to let the devil steal your joy. Come on, joy is a treasure that the devil want to steal from you. Come on, somebody, praise God. Why you let the devil steal what God has given you? Provide yourself. 
yourself bags with, which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupted, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Now, how many understand as well that when you get saved, God saved you to do good works? God's people should be full of alms. Amen. The Greek word for alms, praise God, is charity, which is where we get the word agape. Huh? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That is the truth right there. God's people should be full of alms. And people, that is nothing more but demonstrating the love of God to your neighbor. The Bible tells us to feed those that are hungry and to give drink to those that are thirsty and to clothe the naked and to visit those that are in prison and those, praise God, that are sick. Oh, come on. See, we don't have the love of God. That's why some people can start that out and in two weeks' time,
when the rich man died, he lifted up his eyes. He was in torment. But Lazarus, and he was carried by the angels into Abraham's prison. Come on, somebody. Now, well, who was the real rich man? Who was the real rich man? The real rich man was Lazarus. We got to be rich. Saints got to have a better attitude. You can't be double-minded. You can't have some secret lifestyle. Come on. Hallelujah. You can't be separated from your brothers and sisters. Bible said do good to all men. Especially the of the household of faith. We need some rich people in the church. Rich toward God. God's people are rich. Huh? Amen. They're blessed Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Huh? Amen. Blessed people are the ones that go into the kingdom of heaven. You saw that happen to Lazarus, right? Praise God. Now go to Revelation chapter 20. How many know we got to do better? Amen. Your pastor up here preaching. He's been sick for a whole week. Praise God. And I'm still preaching to you. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You ought to do better. You got to come up. You got to stop. Amen. Boo hooing. Open your pinky toe. Get hit by the core of the door. You got to learn how to shake it off. You got to learn how to press. Yeah. Revelation chapter 20. Watch this. Jesus. Revelation chapter 20. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen what the text says. Let's look at verse 6. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6. The apostle John says, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Did you see that? Who going up in the first resurrection? Them that are blessed and holy. Come on, somebody. So when you're blessed, you're a peacemaker. When you're blessed, it's because you got a pure heart. When you're blessed, it was because you're merciful. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Blessed people don't just hear a word, but they keep it. Luke 11, 28 says, Blessed is the man that hears the word and he keeps it. That's a blessed man. Anything opposite that you cursed. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. These are people that are rich toward God. They have an honest report. They full of the Holy Ghost. Full of wisdom. They gentle. They kind hearted. They're forgiving people. Come on. They're forgiving one another as Christ. Amen. As God for Christ's sake forgave us. Amen. You're not blessed when you're holding grudges against people. No. Come on. Amen. You're not blessed. Hallelujah. You're bringing yourself under condemnation. The scripture says, grudge not. Lest you be condemned. Because grudge is a form of hatred. You refuse to forgive. You got bitterness in your heart. You're angry. And that turns into hatred. Now you got a murdering spirit on you. And as much as people try to fight, amen. They still find themselves manifesting the same attributes and characteristics, amen, of that 
ungodly trait. You understand? Hallelujah. Amen. You're not blessed if you cannot forgive people. Amen. Come on, God forgave you. Your sin was so
See, God, God, God will always prove you. You see? People who found out they didn't have any faith. They poor. Huh? Don't spend no time in the Word. Come on. Don't apply the Scriptures to their life. And it don't make no difference because you're going through something in your life. That don't mean I'm supposed to mock ball, amen, the Word of God until you we can go to on this particular topic. But how many know you can't preach the whole Bible in one day? Yeah. Hallelujah. In Matthew chapter 5, the gospel of Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 1, and seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain and when he was set, his disciples came unto him and he opened his mouth and he taught them, saying, listen to what he says to his disciples. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Huh? Yeah. Them that are poor in spirit, the Bible also teaches, and I believe this is in the book of James, amen. The poor in spirit are them that are what? Rich in faith. Amen. Huh? Amen. They're rich in faith. Praise God. You understand? Amen. Amen. This is Jesus and his Olivet discourse. Amen. Teaching this truth to the beloved of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Anybody here believe the Bible? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we're just trying to show you something because is very prevalent that God's people understand His Word. We got to understand that when we are blessed, it's because we are divinely favored and we are rich toward God. Huh? Amen. I'm reminded before I, I go on, I think it's James chapter 1 12. He said, Blessed is the man that endure temptation. See that? You endure temptation, you are a blessed man. And the Bible said when you are tried, you shall receive a crown of life. See that? Amen. Only blessed people go enter the kingdom. They will be crowned huh? with righteousness. Hallelujah. Huh? Amen. But you have to overcome. It takes the power of God. It takes a made-up mind to yeah. overcome the flesh, to overcome temptation, and you're going to face them. Everybody knows you're going to face these things. That's why you must prepare yourself for battle on a day-to-day -day basis. Amen. Not acting like ain't nothing going to happen to you. Right. Not trying to get ready when things hit your life. And then you find yourself falling flat on your face because you wasn't ready. You forgot when you get saved, man, you got to always be in preparation mode. Amen. Huh? Because the devil coming to knock your block off because... He want to cause you to turn back. Yeah. And how many know that he that puts his hand to the plow and looking back, you ain't fit for the kingdom. Amen. Amen. He knows that. Mm -hmm. He knows that better than anybody. But the people in the church don't know that. They don't understand that. They're not trying to understand. The devil want to keep our minds shifted on what the world is doing. Everything the world is doing, people in the church are doing. But then they the main one going to tell you they love God. I believe in God. Not good enough. That ain't going to get you in. Come on. Amen. Am I making sense to you? Amen. Praise God. How many learning something? Amen. Huh? Amen. Praise God. One thing you can tell folks, when you go to the spiritual tabernacle, you're going to learn something. Amen. Huh? 
I believe that people are learning something. Hallelujah. Amen. Not acting like I already knew that. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got to watch people like that. Amen. That's just a spirit of pride trying to rise up. They don't want you to think you're teaching them nothing. Praise God. But then when you look at their life, you can see they don't know anything. Hello. Amen. So your whole life will tell on you. The, the, the things that you do will tell on you. You can say this and say that to try to puff up your flesh, but God got a way of casting you back down. Praise God. I'm trying to help you. Amen. Let's finish this. In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, the scripture goes on to say, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Praise God. Amen. The Bible said there is a time to mourn. Come on. Hallelujah. And they that mourn shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Every one of God's people should be meek. Amen. Right? Amen. From the brothers to the sisters. Amen. From the eldest to the youngest. Amen. Scripture said Moses was the meekest man on the face of the earth. My God, what an honor. Amen. What an honor. Amen. He was the meekest man on the face of the earth. Hello, somebody. Amen. That's how we should be. Every day. Amen. All day. Yes. In the sight of men and in our private life. Because God is always looking. See, them that fear God are always conscious that God is there. That he's watching. And that when you have convictions, when you reference him, you will not do things that grieve him. You will not do particular things because you know that God, if he wanted to, he can open up the earth and swallow you. And nobody will ever find you again until the day of judgment. That's right. He said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Look at that. You know why a lot of people are not filled? They're not hungry for God. They're not thirsting for righteousness. Their heart and mind is on the television, social media, yapping their gums on their messenger. Huh? Yeah. Facebook and Instagram. That's why they can't get filled. Because that's not where their heart is. Huh? They're not hungry for God. Everything they say may, uh, they may say the right words. Amen. They're coming out their mouth, but God looks at the heart and you see their heart is not yearning for him. Because you can't want God and have all these other things too. It's like having, amen, a wife over here, but on the back side I got about a three or four you know, little, little, you know, little women over here. You got, you got to clean your life. Yeah. You got to detach yourself from, from things that still have your heart. That's, right. Amen. That's why it's hard for people to give it up. Anytime you find yourself can't give stuff up, because that stuff is in your heart. It got a hold to your heart. Right. And you have come to love it so much you can't give it up. And that's why Jesus said you can't serve two masters. He wants your whole heart. Not a part of it. Not a, a corner of it. He wants all of it. That's right. And that's why a lot of people can't get filled. But the Bible said, blessed are them that hunger and thirst, for they shall be filled. This is why, this is why there are people that, are, that God is really, amen, filling them with all of his goodness. Amen. He's filling them with all the fullness. Of his goodness. Because they really desire him. They want him. They go after him. Any hindrance in their life, they move it. Some things they may not know, but that's a hindrance. But if God will show it to them. And when God show it to them, they move it. And that doesn't mean God is just going to always, you know, give you a dream or he's going to speak to you. God will speak to you right through this pulpit. Pray God. And see, that's the point some of y'all want to rule out because you think God is just going to come to you directly and tell you himself. 